First of all, uh, I want to say to you, uh, welcome to Hotline Radio. Uh, we are honored to have you with us this morning. I know myself and all of us here are big fans of yours, and we have been for as long as we can remember. So um, the, the, the bar is extremely high for the respect that we have for you uh, here. And um, what, what, what's been going on with you, uh, Montel? What have you been up to lately? been pretty busy this past uh, year uh, and actually even more than that a lot of people are, are familiar that I'm in my fourth year of ministry uh, now I left the, the recording uh, business uh, the, the, uh, the R&D and pop music business uh, a couple of years ago I went into full time ministry okay. since that time in 2011 we released an album uh, called Shake Heaven uh, that was nominated for it Dove Award, and then uh, just this past a uh, couple of weeks ago, I think September second, we released our second album called Covered, which was a uh, just a ten song uh, album of covers of our favorite worship songs and kind of the take that we uh, or spin we add to worship uh, from churches that are the heavy heavily sung and worship songs across the nation. We just covered them uh, in, in the way that, that we normally do from week in and week out. Uh, I'm currently the lead worship pastor at Victory World Church over in Norcross, Georgia. Okay. Uh, we stream online as well as, uh, uh, you know, we have services here on the weekends on Saturdays and Sundays. So I've been pretty busy just, uh, you know, doing ministry in addition to uh, releasing our second album recently. Okay, so so things have, have you know, changed around for you. You decided to uh, start, you know, start giving the good word, which is... Going, going with God, you can never go wrong, right? Uh, I hope so. This is the path that I've taken, so I'm, you know, I'm in it to win it. I'm all in, and, and uh, it's been the best decision I've ever made in my life. Okay. Now, uh, making that decision of becoming a worship leader was this a difficult transition uh, for you to make, or did you just know that it was time? Like, did you feel like it was a a time for change in your life? Like, what what brought that on for you? journey for me uh, to go into full-time ministry was a, a journey that I've known since I was a child. I was called into ministry as a child. I just never answered the call. So, you know, I spent, you know, 40-something odd years of just living life the way I thought it would be pleasing to God, but pleasing to me as well, you know. And so it wasn't until a couple of years ago that the, the journey wasn't like one big traumatic tragedy happened and I came running to the cross. It was uh, a series and a lifetime of of highs and lows and ebbs and flows that basically brought me to the place of uh, becoming uh, dissatisfied with trying to do things my way and finally just surrendering to, to what I thought Jesus had for me that would be better than what I had for myself. So the journey wasn't like, oh, you know, I, I fell to this place and then the Lord you know, it's it's the Lord has been talking to me all along, all when I was in the music business, all when I was doing this is how we do it. He's, he's never left me. I just uh, took a long time to answer the call that was on my life. And just a couple of years ago, uh, a little over four years ago, is when I, I finally uh, surrendered and, and gave my entire life over to Jesus and said, um, I'm not just doing this to start doing Christian music. I am literally laying music down so that I could do ministry. Oh. Music is just kind of the, the as a worship pattern, pastor is the title that I that I have, but more than okay. just a title, uh, my job description is marrying and burying and baptizing and ministering and counseling and doing the things that I was called to do. If I if I never touched another microphone, right. So for you, you know, as you said, is the the music kind of falls in along with it and behind it. But it's really a true, sincere, spiritual feeling from the heart for you. Yes, sir. That's, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Um, now, how has this awake, or, or not how has I should I should I should say has this awakening affected your recording skills? In which I doubt it. Like I doubt it at all. But do you find yourself being extra aware, obviously, of the content that you put out now? I mean, um, you know. Being, you know, being into the to the to the Christianity or the religious side of things, is there still a certain criteria 
that that has to be made? Like, are you extra careful with what you say now? Oh uh, well, I mean the the reality of that is most of what I write and what I uh, distribute now musically um, is up to this point of you know being four years in ministry has mostly been uh, Christian music or has been uh, songs that at least the things that I personally released have been songs that you know I, I haven't had to think about. Uh, compromising anything simply because it's the lifestyle, you know, that I'm living right now. Two Christian albums, you know, to just tell great, you know, great stories. But I am still a songwriter, and I still uh, believe that God gifted me to be able to write songs. And that doesn't mean that I'm just supposed to write Christian songs. Okay. Uh, I believe that He's gifted me to write songs that bring hope and encouragement, and songs, you know, uh, for the world to be able to listen and enjoy. I have not yet ventured into that area or had to uh, be conscious of, you know, those, you know, the, the different things that I used to because I was in a different place before I was in ministry and before I was completely surrendered. Right. And naturally, that was a different place to write from. I had to write saying, you know, I could say this and this would be, you know, generate more interest or I could say this and flip this word here and this will cause some controversy. I don't think like that anymore now. I just, I just try and stay God conscious of everything that I write, whether I'm writing a love song or, you know, for me, love songs now are, you know, represent the, the love Christ has for his church, the love that he has for us, the love I have for my wife. And so I can write a great love song right now and it don't have nothing to do with lust and it can still be hot and it can still be fly because my, my wife is hot and, and our, our marriage is fly. So, right. you know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of translating uh, what, uh, what by the world could be considered to be a good thing uh, with what is the God thing without making it over preachy and just making it good music. I just think Christians are supposed to make good music just like non-Christians should make good music. Absolutely. I, 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 agree, with, I agree with what you're saying on that uh, totally because as you say, when you're speaking from, when you're speaking from the word of God, all the music is good and, and because you're speaking out of his word and and when you're speaking in that 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 fashion it cannot go wrong because where do you have time to to really say something out of text when you're speaking under the word of god so that makes that makes perfect sense um now also not that it matters any be you know but how you know how how has your public followed you since um you know from your mainstream uh success have they been receptive to you and, and the new message that you're given? Well, you know, I, I, what I find interesting is, uh, you know, the, the word of God basically speaks about how, um, how wide is the pathway where, you know, where a lot of people are traveling on and narrow, you know, or wide is the gate and then narrow is the gate, you know, where the path of righteousness, very few people go. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's just interesting. You know, if I, you know, if I tweet something or I social media something in regard to, hey, I got this project coming out or the Lord has done this in my life, you know, there's minor response, you know, and, and you know, respectable response. I still have people that, that follow, but, um, you know, if I said Montel Jordan new hot album dropping this or that or the other or Montel Jordan leads the ministry or something like that, then, you know, all the millions of people that were there before, you know, tend to perk up like, yo, he's here, or when you gonna drop an album, or, you know, and so I just have to realize that, you know, doing the kingdom business is not the wide pathway, so uh, I do have uh, quite a few people who, who follow, but to me it's not, you know, about how many people follow, I think it's the quality of the people who want to know what I'm doing for Jesus and have a desire to, to do uh, and to follow somebody that's going hard after Jesus, so you know, that means the millions of fans who were there before, you know, when I was talking about, you know, drinking and hanging out. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I'm talking about, you know, uh, a better lifestyle and a freeing lifestyle, but less people want to hear about that. Then, you know, that's just, you know, that's that's just scripture. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, can't, I can't be mad. And, you know, well, how come the same million of people that follow me here don't want to follow me? And the Bible talks about why that is. And so... You know, that comes along with the territory. Am I willing to forsake, you know, uh, 
to look more for man's praise than, than to hear, you know, the praise of what God thinks of what I'm doing or, or the life that I'm living. So I'm fine with that. The, you know, the, the audience has changed over the years, but right. I have a piece uh, with uh, I'm reaching everybody that he wants me to reach, and I'm beyond fine with that. You know what? You that, That's so true. Uh, you know, like you say, when, you know, a lot of times, and, you know, it's not necessarily to shun any, anyone else, but it's just like you say, when people get used to a lot of the other music that portrays a lot of the, the partying and drinking and stuff like that, there's so many followers. But as you say, when you when you get out of that stage and you grow out of that and you find yourself, because one thing is true, even as an artist, you're a human being first and you have to find yourself. And at the end of the day, it boils down to uh, family structure, family values, and more positive things, it, it, you know, in life. But it's like you say, it's amazing how millions of people want to hear, you know, this from you. But when you switch over, uh, that 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 hallway narrows. But uh, as you say, quality over quantity makes a whole lot of sense. And and you're happy with what you're doing, just in general, because. You know, you don't care how many people are following for this and that as long as you're living righteous within yourself. And I, I commend you for that. Uh, absolutely. Because a lot of artists are afraid to admit that or even make that change. So uh, that, that's a big deal, Montel. And, and I salute you for that as well. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. No doubt, man. Um, now, how... Uh, well, not really so much. I guess you answered. I was going to say, how do you deal with people you know, that, that don't receive the message that, that you're relaying to you relaying now. But I mean, you know, I guess you can't really, you can be respectful, but you can't really pay so much um, attention to that. So I'll go on to now. First of all, congratulations on the success of, of your album, Shake Heaven So Far. Uh, what is your favorite song on that album and why? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. The, actually, uh, with the, the Shake Heaven album, came out a couple of years ago my favorite song uh would be the, the actual title song shake heaven uh, i enjoyed that song uh, a lot because it you know has a high energy impact for kids they love it um and then there's another song on the album uh, called you are that originally was a love song i uh, written to my wife and i was given the the freedom to rewrite it and to make it a love song uh to jesus and so I love it because it's, you know, it's guitar driven. It has some R&B feel to it, pop tendency. It's just a good song. Once again, it parallels uh, what God's love is like to regular everyday uh, occurrences, you know, to a, a kid's smile on Christmas Day or, you know, to sunlight on somebody's pillow or waking up, you know, those different things. It, it basically makes God's love practical where we can actually understand it. Uh, or at least try and understand it in right. human terms. Uh, of this new album that just came out on September 2nd, uh, I would say that uh, my favorite song on that is uh, a Jared Anderson song written by him, but uh, we covered it. It's called The Great I Am. Uh, and to me, uh, that thing goes big. And whenever we worship that song in a church or at a, a venue, a concert, a uh, stadium or whatever, that song always seems to take off because... Uh, God said, I am, and because of that, as we're uh, kind of re reciting what he said over over, you know, back to him through our harmonies and melodies, I think it just almost reinforces uh, what his word already says, and, and uh, we get a chance to do what the angels in heaven are doing, but we get to do it here on earth, so uh, that's what I would say uh, my favorite songs are from the last two albums. Okay, now, um, and you also... Uh, um who what or who was your favorite artist to to work with? If you could say that without getting in trouble, one of your favorite. I know you probably have a few, but on this on this album. Oh uh, well, on this on this particular album, yeah. um, you know, I mean, most of the songs that we've done are, are have been in house. You know, I've worked with with Israel Hawk, and I've worked with Ricardo Sanchez, Marty Menez. I mean, the albums have you know guest features stuff like that you know Becca Shea is a friend of mine mm -hmm. I talk about the chamber so you know and, and then even before doing the, the work in ministry I've worked with you know many many artists you know throughout my my career from Gladys Knight to Whitney Houston so there's you know there's a a plethora of people that I could go back and look to and say they're you know people that I enjoyed uh, working with but I would say right now currently uh, I'm working with and writing with a friend uh, who's a very accomplished songwriter named Crystal Nicole, okay. uh, and uh, she's phenomenal. She's on the craze last two albums, and and, uh, and we are friends. 
Now I noticed um you said September second that the uh, you just had an album to come out currently, right? Correct. That is correct. Okay, so because I, I was actually going to ask you about any new follow up albums, but I guess that's late on down the line. Is that thinking far ahead, which I'm sure it will be, but right now you're you're probably just working on the new album which which just came out so 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 far yeah right now we're, we're just supporting the covered album and, and we're not making like a crazy big push of it. it you know the lord told us at the top of the year cover the house and okay. covering the house simply meant the songs that we do week to week that our congregation you know they'll hear you know tasha Cobb sing break every chain you know, oh, black man. folks will hear Tasha Cobb's Break Every Chain. The white folks will hear uh, Will Regan with United Pursuit. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote the song, and they'll hear his version of Break Every Chain. But then they come here to Victory, and they hear me sing Break Every Chain. And I don't sound like Will Regan, and I don't sound like Tasha Cobb. Okay. People will leave here on the weekend and be like, yo, what is that song? And we'll tell them it's Break Every Chain. And they'll go, and they'll hear Will Regan's version of it, or they hear Tasha Cobb's version of it. And it's not our version of it, and that's not the same song. So covering the house basically meant the songs that are being sung across the nation in churches every single week. Uh, we've covered the songs that uh, that we felt was resonating uh, in people's uh, hearts, uh, and by covering those songs in the way that we do them, uh, people had an opportunity to to get that and to drive around and have the worship with them in their cars and in their homes and on their phones, on their computers that they get here in Victory every single week. So that's what we did. The album's called Covered. It came out on September 2nd. Uh, and uh, I think it's a phenomenal piece of work. And it's it's covering the house as we prepare to go into next year, our 25th uh, church's 25th year anniversary. And I believe we'll probably have another project ready, a new project ready about that time, September of next year. Okay. Um, in a in a second, I'll, I'll, I'll you know want to ask what you minister at, but I had to stop you. For, I I had to cut in just for a second because you mentioned break every chain, and so you've done, which is one of my favorite songs. I know um, you know I, I was you know not too long ago radio personality at a gospel radio station myself, and I love to play that song. So you have done a version, your own version of that. That is correct. That okay. is correct. The album is out. It's up online on iTunes. Amazon, every place that you can get it, the album's called Covered, and the last song on the album, song number 10, is Break Every Chain. And I think my version of it is uh, a God-given um, uh, opportunity to, to sing it in a way that people probably haven't heard it before. Okay, Montel, I'm going to tell you now, I'm running out to go get that album. And I and I suggest that everyone out there also does to follow suit and um, go pick up the album. Now, um... What is the name, if you can say so, what is the name of the church that you currently um, minister at and where is it located uh, for people who may want to come out or if somebody's coming through town and, and they, they want to stop stop by and get the good word? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the church is Victory World Church. It's located in Norcross, Georgia. You can look it up online at victoryatl.com. Uh, I'm also listed there on the website or you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter or uh, on my Instagram is Mr. Jordan 1911 Mr. Jordan 1911 and uh, I'm easy to reach you know you can google me and I'm you know I'm, I'm findable because I'm the uh, I'm here doing ministry now so right. uh, but uh, Victory is in Atlanta Georgia it's uh, in Norcross which is about 20 minutes uh, northeast of the downtown of Atlanta, and the church is uh, about uh, uh, 12,000 members, maybe a little more than that now, a multicultural, multi-generational church with over 105 different nations of people represented here uh, in the ministry. We have services on Saturday night, streaming live at Victory ATL at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and on Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Senior pastor is Dennis Rouse. His wife is Colleen Rouse. R O U S E. Okay. Now, uh, before we before we let you get out of here, is there anything that we have not covered? Uh, you know, that that you like to to say this at this time? Uh, are there any shout outs? Uh, that you like to give to to anyone, or um, you know, any thank yous or anything like that? Uh, to the congregation or or anything? I would I would just say. Uh, 
thank you for what you're doing to do ministry, you know, via radio, through online, through just using your resources mm-hmm. and your influence to reach people. Hopefully somebody that's listening to this, um, listening to this this interview will have an opportunity to go and check out the album. It's not for, for me. The album is for, uh, was created simply for anybody who uh, needed hope because they felt hopeless and, uh, or needed encouragement or just needed to have worship in the face of all the other stuff that the world is throwing at them. A uh, cool thing about the album a lot of people don't know is we created the album Debt Free. We did a Kickstarter campaign, raised, uh, we tried to raise $20,000 in 25 days. We actually raised about $24,000. We created our album completely debt free with no church money or tied money uh, uh, that went towards the, the creation of the project. And then uh, all the proceeds from the album uh, go directly to the church. Naturally, we pay our, our, our licenses for the artist songs that we covered. Uh, uh, but other than that, every dime that comes in uh, on the purchase of a project uh, goes directly to the church to do ministry. And so, uh, you know, if anything, I would just say uh, anyone listening has an opportunity to go and, and be blessed uh, by hearing the, the project. Uh, you will love it because it's it's one of the labors of love that we put time into, and we we love it. And so, uh, hopefully, people will will gravitate towards that and through word of mouth, just begin to you know let people know that it's a great project out there because it's hot, it's great. Okay, uh, listen, we want to want to again thank you for taking time to come and speak with us today, Montel. I want you to know uh, here at Hotline Radio and on the Keep Her Show, you are welcome any time you like come you know come in and, and, and let us know about your projects uh any you know the, the church events that are coming on um if you guys are traveling or, or the choir and you, you have a choir uh, is there a choir at your church i'm assuming normally our church we, we'll do a choir a couple times a year but mostly we have a praise and worship team and a worship band that consists of anywhere from four to six people on a week and we travel uh inside the house is victory world worship but outside the house when we go and travel or tour it's victory world music okay also um you know like i say uh feel free to come on the show like i i like to stay in contact with you and and come on the show and, and also help to uh give the blessings and spread the good word as well also to other people because that's one thing that i i also try to stress is is good knowledge and good faith uh towards my listeners um uh, every day in whatever uh, possible way I can. Um, you know, it's not a gospel radio show, but at the same token, the word of God should get to a person in any possible way that it can. Everyone needs it all the time. So I'd love it uh, for you to come back sometime whenever you're free. Uh, contact us or we'll try to keep in touch with you and, and see if we can get you back on here sometime to uh, come speak with the people. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Keith. Thank you for the invitation. No doubt, man. Um, all right. Uh, everybody out there in Radio Land, everybody on online, the name of the album is Shake Heaven. And also, uh, the other name of the album, there's the uh, album that came out September 2nd, again, is, is what, Montel? Tell the people. It's called Covered. 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 Okay. Uh, it's available. Now, it's co- Covered is available on iTunes and wherever music is sold as well, right? That is correct. Okay, so there's, there's, that's it. So now I'm gonna tell you, everybody has been waiting on Montel Jordan to come on the show and and hear about what he's saying. And what he's saying is something valuable and and good and is is gracious. So make sure you go out support Montel. Montel Jordan, we love you. Um, we're always glad to hear from you here. I appreciate you coming on today. You have a blessed day as well. Now I'm gonna, me personally, now I'm I'm gonna be following you. Okay. Uh, so I'll be checking out what's going on down there as well. If I, you know, get ready to come through, I'll come through and check you out. And any music, any time that we can rotate on here from your album, please let us know. So, so I can, you know, keep you in rotation as well on a daily basis. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you, Gideon. No doubt. We appreciate, pre- pre- appreciate you too. So Montel, on behalf of Hotline Radio, um, I'd like to take this time out. Uh, thank you for taking time out to join us today and you have a wonderful day Montel thanks a lot God bless man God, God, God bless that was the one and only Montel Jordan himself uh, we're glad to see that he is 
is doing well. He's doing fine as we expected. We already knew that. I mean, he's not been hiding or anything of that nature. He has been at the church and spreading the word of God. And we're positive to see that uh, from the brother, um, one of ours, doing positive things. So again, we uh, send a shout out and a special thank you to Montel Jordan. You're listening to Hotline Radio, Keith Harris Show, Global Network. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 